O oh, Stardust Dragon, no one must ever know of our forbidden love. Oh crap, the thing's recording. Well, I've been a fan of Yu-Gi-Oh! ever since I came to America, and it's actually been the one card game that I've played consistently, because no one will play me in Magic the Gathering because everyone hates slivers for some reason. Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories came out in 2002. You know, when the original PlayStation was dead and the PS2 was finishing its snuff film starring the Dreamcast. But if you were playing the card game at the time, you had to stop and think, wait a minute, these aren't the rules of the game. Why am I so limited in what I can do? That's because this game was released in Japan in 1999, so during its development, Konami was using prototype rules that they were considering for the actual card game. Even for 1999, these graphics are iffy. The PlayStation is certainly capable of better. Well, the graphics during the actual duels are crap. The duel stage looks pretty nice, but when looking at the 2D sprites that are the cards and looking at the menus, they could have done a lot better. The 3D models for some of the monsters are terrible, while some are pretty good. It gives the game the look as if they were running low on time and had to rush. The music is kind of bland, but the music in the free duel mode is actually pretty catchy. Now this game is actually an RPG, and like all JRPGs, you're going to need to grind the hell out of this game if you want to get any rare and good cards. You're probably thinking that you can use the code on the card that you have. Well, you're right, but you won't get the card. You see, you can use the code on the card, but you need to have a certain number of star chips to have the card put in your collection so you can use it. And the cards are insanely expensive, costing hundreds if not hundreds of thousands of star chips. And you only get a maximum of 5 per duel, depending on how you do, and you'll mostly do poorly. The only way to get new cards easily is by defeating your opponents. But the card is always random and will more than likely be a useless card. Even if you figure out what card what opponent drops, you'll never know if they'll drop it. You could play the same duelist over 800 times before you get the card you want. But probably by that time, you'll have the star chips to just use the code and buy the card. As I said earlier, this game uses the prototype rules, and that's where the gameplay fails. To actually understand how technical this game is, you need to have a doctorate in dueling. First and foremost, you must have exactly 40 cards in your deck. No more, no less. You must always play a card before ending your turn, and you must always have 5 cards at the start of your draw phase. So if you use 5 cards on your turn, you draw 5 cards on your next, meaning you can deck out and lose very quickly. Secondly, you can only play one card each turn. If you play a spell, you can't summon any monsters. If you summon a monster, you can't set any spells or traps. Speaking of traps, they activate automatically. You have no say in when they go off. So a good trap can effectively be wasted and won't be there when you need it. All the monsters are also normal monsters. None of them have any effect. But you can summon high level monsters without tributing, so that's nice. Of the rules and there's two other and that's just the basic gist of the rules and there's two other aspects that make this game extremely frustrating the guardian stars alter the attack points of the monster when battling another monster for example if Gaia the dragon champion has 2600 attack while aligned with mercury and blue eyes white dragon with 3000 attack but aligned with the sun Gaia will gain 500 attack points because mercury beats the sun to put it in easier terms it works like Pokemon weaknesses. The fusion is the worst part of this game. It's horrible. First, you don't need polymerization or a fusion deck. Sounds awesome, but it's not. First, you never know what monsters will fuse into what. And secondly, and most annoyingly, only two monsters fuse at a time. If you select three, the first two will fuse and then the third fuses with the result. But, and this is the annoying part, if the fusion fails, only the last monster that was selected is kept. So if you choose three monsters, the first two fuse to a powerful monster, but then the third isn't compatible, you lose that powerful fusion monster. That part alone will piss you off to no end. And guess what? Your opponent will always perform a successful fusion summon. So how do you overcome this huge handicap? You have to study what monsters fuse into what. You have to memorize the thousands and thousands of combinations. What type fuses with what type? What specific monster fuses with what type? And what specific monster fuses with what specific monster? Monster A and Monster B can fuse and make Monster C, but Monster G can fuse with Monster O and make Monster C. Attack points also play a factor in fusion too. If Monster A is a dragon type with 1700 attack points, 
and Monster B is a zombie type with zero attack points, Zombie Dragon will not be made because Monster A had more attack points than Zombie Dragon, which had 1600. Do you see how technical this game is? And I'm not even done yet! You can even fuse spell and trap cards as well, but there's so little spells and traps, it's pointless to do so, because the game is just way too monster based. Monsters that we know that require three or more monsters, like Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, are ritual monsters. However, the ritual cards require specific monsters for you to tribute. It's not dependent on the amount of levels of the tributed monsters. But rituals won't matter because the game is so heavily focused on fusion monsters, making sure that you won't be using any strategy and hoping on blind luck. The opponent AI, oh my god, it is relentless for most of the game. The opponent's AI will always know what to fuse into what to kick your ass. You will see the opponent always fusion summon the giant razor bladed dragon penis and proceed to fuck you in the ass with it through your pants. There's very, very few opponents that are brainless. All the rest are insanely difficult and you'll lose just because your opponent pulled out the dragon penis on the first turn. Even if you manage to destroy it with Dark Hole, you'll be wide open because you can only play one card per turn. And your opponent will just summon an even bigger dragon penis on their turn. Speaking of storyline, this one is extremely weak and it betrays the Yu-Gi-Oh! canon. And it's really short too. The story tells a very bad version of the Pharaoh from Yu-Gi-Oh. You play as the Pharaoh when he was a prince, who plays card games in Egypt, and if you follow the series, they summon monsters from stone tablets to do battle. The story is that some dick wants to rule the world using the Millennium Items, wins the puzzle from you, but you smash it, trapping your soul inside. Fast forward to the present day. Yugi enters a tournament, wins everyone's Millennium Item, the soul of the Pharaoh goes back to his time, collects the Millennium Items, and defeats the bad guy. Everything else is just useless filler that doesn't actually help the story along. Yeah, you could probably say that about a lot of animes, but with this game, the story is just so boring. You're just sitting there saying, where's the chase and how do I cut to it? I don't mind when someone takes creative liberties when adapting a story, but they played a little too fast and loose with this one. The story is as boring as Superman 64's gameplay, and we all know how that went. As I mentioned earlier, you need to grind the hell out of this game. But how can you do it efficiently? Well, you gotta enter free duel mode and attempt to wallop everyone that you've come across in the story mode. If you keep losing to someone, you just gotta leave the campaign, enter free duel, and grind previous opponents. And trust me, you're going to grind them into a watery liquid long before they give you any rare cards. I've played plenty of RPGs and I've never seen a game require this much grinding, especially an RPG this short. Am I done yet? I didn't mention this before, but don't lose, ever, because your chances to save are far and few between. Because if you lose, it's game over. Yeah, game over and it's back to your last save. So the second you start the game, run away from your mentor and head to the card shop to save, because if you lose before you can save, you have to start a new game. This is a card game, why am I getting a game over? Especially if I'm not doing anything important to the story. I lost my third just for fun duel in the campaign mode and got a game over just because my opponent pulled out the rape stick on turn 1. And if you lose just before the save point, you have to go through the gauntlet of ass beatings again. And if you won a rare card along the way, you lost it. I can imagine that if it was an important part of the story where you absolutely had to win and you got a game over from a loss, that makes sense. But when it's not integral to the story where losing would have no impact on it, then you shouldn't get a game over. This game shouldn't have been released in America, it was just too late. If Yu-Gi-Oh! had come to America a lot sooner, then this game wouldn't be the trash that it is. But if you're a hardcore Yu-Gi-Oh! fan to the point of needing psychiatric help, you'll probably like it. 